Good morning, everybody. Praise God. It's good to be, hallelujah, together in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Coming around his word together. Praise God. You know, as I was driving um, down into the village of Orency in South Loch just on Wednesday there, I witnessed a, a sight that I have seen on quite a number of occasions in different locations around the island. And a golden eagle was, was kind of flapping along at a low altitude and there was a crow harassing it. I've seen this sometimes a number of of, of crows, but this was just one crow harassing it and it's kind of flapping, 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 flying. As we were coming down into the village, it was actually down, down below us. And, uh, you know, whenever I see this happen, whenever I've seen this happen in the past, I've always wondered why the eagle puts up with it. It's more than twice the size of a crow. It has the capacity to effortlessly soar and, and rise to an altitude where where he would just leave the crow behind. And as, I, as I've observed this, you know, this same scene many times, I've also puzzled over why so many believers will allow the enemy of their souls to continually harass them, keep them flapping as they live below their position as the children of God, who, whose new address is in the heavenly places, far above, far above. The scripture says far above every principality and power and demonic intimidation. You know, as so I was just meditating on this, I began to think, you know, eagles don't really look all that impressive as they flap along, harassed by other birds. You know, I wasn't even tempted to take out my camera and try and capture this. You know, I take out my phone and try and capture this on the camera because it, they just don't look all that impressive as they flap along and being harassed by, by, by other birds whose intimidation they could easily overcome. You know, you don't see an eagle in that kind of scene and think, oh man, I wish I could be like him. <laughs> Eagles look at their most impressive when they are soaring high in the sky, effortlessly riding the thermals as they expend very little effort. You know, it's when you look at that most majestic of birds and think, wow, I would love to be able to do that. <laughs> I'd love to be able to do what that, what, that, what that eagle's doing right now. And you know what? The good news is, I like to preach good news, amen. The good news is that we can, that we can be like that. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31 from the Amplified Bible says, but those who wait for the Lord, who expect, look for, and hope in him will gain new strength and renew their power. They will lift up their wings and rise up close to God like eagles. Rise toward the sun. Hallelujah. They will run and not become weary. They will walk and not grow tired. Oh, hallelujah. When we expect, when we look for, when we hope in the Lord, we rise on the spiritual thermals of his love and grace as our strength is supernaturally renewed. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. See, we are here to bring a message of hope to the people around us. Not only as a, as a verbal communication, but as a living demonstration. Amen. Not only as a verbal communication, but as a living demonstration. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. First of all, he said, I am the light of the world. And then he passed on that to us. He said, now you are the light. You are the light of the world. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. You know, if, if we do as much flapping as others, as those in the world who are without God and without hope, if we do as much flapping as they do in response to the stuff of life, then there's going to be nothing in our testimony that will cause them to want what we have, to convict them of the, of, that they need what we have. <laughs> but if they see us soar above the stuff that they are still flapping under, then they will have something that will convict them of their need. Convict them of their need of the... Of, of the for the supernatural life that we have received. Hallelujah. You know, just about everyone has heard, especially around us here on, 
on, on this island. Just every, Everyone has heard the simple message of the good news of the gospel that is contained in John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The message translation puts it this way. This is how much this is how much God loved the world. This is it's elsewhere it talks about the God's demonstration of love. The greatest demonstration of love the world has ever seen. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Oh hallelujah. While we were still sinners, God demonstrated his great love towards us. Hallelujah. Oh hallelujah. You know John 3.16, message translation, this is how much God loved the world. He gave his son, his one and only son. And this is why, (laughs) this is why, so that no one need be destroyed. By believing in him, anyone can have a whole and lasting life. Jesus came to give the world a demonstration of what that life looks like. And then he passed on the role of demonstration to us. If you're a believer, say no more flapping. (laughs) No more flapping. Do you believe this morning? Let's let's say it together. No more flapping. I was born to soar. Hallelujah. I was born to soar. See, we need to remember that everlasting life is not just a, a quantity, but it is a quality of life. When it becomes reduced to a quantity only, then it has been stripped by religious tradition of its appeal. And it can appear more like drudgery. <laughs> Jesus said that he came so that we could have, John chapter 10 verse 10, he said that he, he came so that we could have and enjoy life in all of its fullness. Super abundant, excessive, overflowing, surplus, over and above, more than enough, profuse, extraordinary, more than sufficient life and it doesn't begin (laughs) when you die it begins when you simply believe that Jesus is Lord and that he died and rose again Romans chapter 10 verses 8 to 10 what does it say the word is near you in your mouth and in your heart that is the word of faith which we preach that if you confess with your mouth The Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved, healed, delivered, prospered. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Hallelujah. Jesus said that the words that we speak, they originate in our hearts. And so when we believe that Jesus is Lord and that he has risen from the dead, the words that we speak will reflect that. And our lives will follow our words. Our words will proclaim that Jesus is our Saviour. Our words, our testimony will proclaim and declare that Jesus is our Saviour, that Jesus is our healer, that Jesus is our deliverer, that Jesus is our provider, that Jesus is everything that we need him to be, whenever and wherever we need him to be. And our lives will be the fruit of our testimony. Hallelujah. Come on, let's say it together. No more flapping. (laughs) I was born to soar. I was born to soar. Hallelujah. You see, the world that God loves so much is crying out, for a saviour. The world that, that God loves so much that he provided everything that the world would, that every person in this world would ever need is crying out for a healer, for a deliverer, for someone to provide for them. And how can they believe? Romans 10, how can they believe if they haven't heard? And how can they hear if nobody tells them? We are here to tell them, as I said, not just not just with a with a verbal communication, but also with a living demonstration. <laughs> we are the demonstration. We are here to not just tell them about it, but to show and tell 
Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Jesus said, He that believes in me out of his heart shall flow rivers of living water. See, that's who we are born again to be, channels of the river that originates from the throne of God and that brings healing to every part of the sea of humanity that it reaches. The word that we speak is a healing word. Hallelujah. It's not supposed to be delivered in, in anger or frustration. Sometimes, I, honestly, I really believe I think we need a, 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 a serious attitude change towards those that, those that we are commissioned and called and commissioned to, to reach with this message. Hallelujah. We need to see them as God sees them. We need to be moved towards them with the same compassion that Jesus was moved towards them with. Hallelujah. To, that, that we may be moved with that compassion that... that, 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 that reaches into the, the deepest needs of their lives and brings supernatural transformation and change because we believe that change is possible. It doesn't matter how far gone people have been judged to be, whether they've been written off by or not by the world. Hallelujah. We believe change, supernatural change and transformation is possible. We believe it's already been provided. Hallelujah. You know, I don't know if you've heard, you know, because it's a bit of a buzz thing in the in the church for the last few years, you know, the billion soul harvest. It's very interesting, actually, because I mean Joe Ewan mentioned it uh, the other night on the on the on the Zoom meeting we had. But you know what? Just a couple of hours before that, in fact, a few days before that, I'd been uh talking with a friend and 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 he'd mentioned that and I'd said, well, I said, that's really bugging me that these days, because why a billion souls? There's almost 8 billion people alive on this planet right now. On this, in, in this world that God loved so much that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him, why, why stop at a billion? I said, it to, and then I said it a few days later to Katrina, I said, well, what is this? And, and that very night, and then uh, on, 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 on uh, Thursday night, and then of course it was mentioned on, on the meeting that we had. Hallelujah. <laughs> How can I stop at a billion when God is not willing that any should perish and there's almost eight billion? Now we know that some of these already are believers. Maybe a, a, a very conservative estimate, of maybe somewhere around, I think it's just under two billion. So why would we stop at another billion? Come on. We've got to, sometimes we've got to break out of just the, the things that become, you know, Buzz, not just buzzwords, but buzz statements, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are messengers. We're carriers of a message. It's a saving message. It's a healing message. It's a, a liberating message. It's an empowering message. And what's the word the Lord's given us? Out of the message, the ministry comes. The opportunities to see and to experience the Holy Spirit confirm our message in the lives of those who will be, who will receive it. Believe it and receive it. Hallelujah. So I just want to share, well, let's say it, no more flapping. Amen. No more flapping. I was born to soar. Hallelujah. <laughs> I want to share with you something right now, you know, I believe will, will liberate you from a huge amount of the stress and the pressure and the flapping that you're never supposed to experience. As a follower of Jesus, hallelujah. <laughs> because Jesus invited us to come to him and learn how to do everything from a position of rest, hallelujah. You know that you can be very active from a position of rest? <laughs> anyway, Matthew eleven twenty eight to 30, and you know these words well from the, from the, from the message translation. Are you tired? Can't get enough of speaking this out, you mean? Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, Jesus says. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me, work with me, watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms 
of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Let's say it again. No more flapping. Hallelujah. No more flapping. We were born to soar. I was born to soar. Hallelujah. <laughs> what were we, what were we, we, we were declaring over our lives over the last few weeks? I don't go low. I go high. I was born to soar. <laughs> Hallelujah. So again, it's very interesting that a prophetic word that, 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 that Joe Ewan brought concerning higher ground. I don't go low, I go high, hallelujah. I don't, no more flapping. I was born to soar, oh hallelujah. You know, one of the biggest uh, stressors created by religion, I believe, is, is its emphasis on what you believe over who you believe. You know, wh what you believe, and it's very important what you believe, but if you just focus on that all the time and a then uh, it, it's out of that that, that the isms arise. And of course, the isms bring schisms. So you, you, we should never overemphasize what we believe over who we believe. What we believe should arise out of who we believe. Hallelujah. You see, Jesus came to turn the emphasis around. He said to a man who had just heard that his daughter was dead, he said to him not to be afraid, but to only believe. He was, he, he was saying, don't go with what you believe about death being the end. <laughs> Continue to believe in me. Remember, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Continue to believe in me, Jesus was saying, as the one who, who you came to, to ask for help. Don't lose that. Focus. On who instead of what? <laughs> so we are often fixated on what we need to do in order to do the same things that Jesus did. Well, what did Jesus have to say about that? In John chapter 6, verses 28 to 29, they replied, We want to perform God's works too. What should we do? <laughs> Great question. Simple answer. Jesus told them this is the only work oh come on this is the only work god wants from you believe in the one he has sent oh hallelujah because of course in john chapter 3 doesn't it say god did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved that the world might believe in the one that he has sent not to condemn, but to save. Only believe, expect, look for, and hope <laughs> in him. You know, down through history, believers have seen God do what only God can do when they have done all they can do, which is only believe and expect and look for and hope in him. Come on, let's say it together. No more flapping. I was born to soar. I don't go low, I go high. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 to 2. By the way, the title of this message is No More Flapping. No More Flapping. Hallelujah. This is, I think, part one of this. Maybe we'll see how many parts we have here. I hope. Um, there'll probably be a few parts of this, I believe. Hallelujah. No more flapping. I was born to soar. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 to 2. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And the New Living Translation puts it this way. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes 
on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Looking unto Jesus, the, keeping our eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher, the initiator and the perfecter. You now, see, we, we know that everything that Jesus did, everything that he did during his earthly ministry, he did it as a man anointed. Yes, he was the Son of God. Yes, he was God the Son. Yes, he was the second person of the Trinity. But he did everything that he did and during his earthly ministry. He did it as a man anointed by the Holy Spirit. Acts 10.38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit. What is it? Jesus of Nazareth, that, 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 that uh, focus is right there on his humanity. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil, because God was with him. Oh, hallelujah. Say no more flapping. <laughs> I was born. I was born to soar. Hallelujah. You see, the, the truth is that Jesus was a man like none of us can ever be because he was a sinless man. And because he was a sinless man, he had perfect faith. Because the Bible tells us that whatever is not of faith is sin, and he had no sin. Therefore, he had perfect faith. So that's why we look to Jesus. <laughs> because he is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. He is the champion who initiates and who perfects our faith. The word there, finisher or perfecter, is a Greek word that means completer. He's the completer of our faith. Just like the father, a member of the demonized boy, came to the disciples first, the disciples could do nothing for him. Then Jesus came and, and he, he, he told Jesus that the disciples had been unable to help him. Jesus said, well, just if you'll just only believe. And he said, I do believe, I do believe, but help my unbelief. And you know what? He does. <laughs> because he's the finisher. He's the perfecter. He is the completer of our faith. He completes and perfects our incomplete and imperfect faith as we expect and look for and hope in him. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, no more flapping. I was born to soar. Hallelujah. See, Jesus retained his sinlessness as he resisted and as he overcame every onslaught of temptation that assaulted him. As the crows came to harass him, <laughs> what did he do? Did he flap? No, he... <laughs> he took off, hallelujah, and left them behind, hallelujah. Why? Because he took hold of the word of God, and he took hold of the spirit. Spirit of God that was upon him, hallelujah, to, and the power and the authority he'd been given to resist every temptation. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. And then he laid it all down for us. And in his sinless perfection, he submitted himself to death on a cross as he took our place, took our punishment, as the perfect and once and for all acceptable sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. He is our saviour, he is our healer, and he is our deliverer. Say, I'm expecting, I'm looking for, I'm hoping in him. So there's no more flapping. <laughs> so I was born to soar, hallelujah, O Rabbi Shaka, to rise on the thermals of his grace, the unforced rhythms of grace. All that eagle has to do is catch a thermal and whoof, <laughs> up it goes, hallelujah, soaring up there in the heights, in the higher ground, <laughs> the high place, hallelujah, far above, far above the intimidation 
of the principalities and the powers. Hallelujah. Korobu Shakabasaka. You know, one of the fundamental mistakes that we make is when we think that we are responsible to do what Jesus did and to emulate or to copycat his works in a show of supernatural power that points people to us more than it does to him. You know, that's never going to end well. Because <laughs> we haven't got it. But he has. See, the good news is the good news of Jesus Christ. The good news is not that we've just showed up in town. <laughs> Come on. The good news is that we have showed up in town to point people to him. Come on. Hallelujah. Those who have come turn, those who have turned the world upside down have come here also. Of course they, they misread the situation because those who had just showed up in town had come to turn the world the right way up to point them back. Stop flapping and fussing about what's going on at a human level without help. <laughs> to turn them around and point them back. Hallelujah to the only one who can help, the one who came to help. Hallelujah. The one who came to save, not to condemn, but to save all who will simply and only believe. Hallelujah. No more flapping. <laughs> we were born to soar. Amen. Hallelujah. See, it's the good news of what he has done and what he will still do when we look to him, when we expect and look for and hope in him and, and, and stop flapping and just soar. Hallelujah. Do what we were born to do. Hallelujah. You know, in the first recorded um, healing miracle of the newly born church, Peter said, if you remember, to the lame man at the gate of the temple, he said, look at us. And then he went on to say, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And later on, when the man had been miraculously healed, went leaping and jumping and praising God, remember, at the temple, Later on, he said to the people who were, who, who were, who were pretty much gobsmacked at, at this man's miraculous healing, he said, why are you looking so intently at us? And he got his his head and wondered, well, he said, look at us. <laughs> then he went on to explain that the man's healing was nothing to do with their power, Peter and John's power of godliness. It was Jesus' name and, and faith in his name, he said, that brought healing to this man. You see, the good news of the kingdom is not just look at us. Yes, we are the testimony and the demonstration of what God has done. People, you can say to people, look at my life, this is everything in my life, God has done this. But you can't just look at me and expect to be changed. No, you've got to look through me to the one who did it. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm a demonstration of what God can do. I'll tell you my testimony and I'll tell you of everything that he's done and, and I'm here as living proof of the fact that he's done all these things but don't look to me, look through me to the one who did it. Hallelujah. The good news of the kingdom is look to Jesus and discover for yourself what God will do. Hallelujah. <laughs> The good news of the kingdom is not look what we can do. It's look to him and experience what he can do, what he will do. The good news of the kingdom is look to Jesus for what he can do and what he will do. Hallelujah. Let's get our message out there. Amen. I don't know if you remember, but I think it was uh, just at the at the end of, of um, 2019, just before we passed over into 2020, and it, God, remember the prophetic declaration God gave us was the year of the unashamed of, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, but it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. And I remember sharing in, in a meeting one night um, a, a, a prophetic word that God gave me concerning that, that it, it wasn't, this wasn't going to be about just declaring who we are in Christ or even who Christ is in us. This was about declaring who he is. It's 
fantastic to be to discover you know there's a lot of teaching on identity and and finding out who we are in Christ and it's you know it's great to be established in that then you go to another level of 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 of, of discovering who Christ is and you who Christ is in us who we are in him and who he is in us but no it has to go beyond that hallelujah a declaration of who he is who he is that's the gospel the gospel is who he is hallelujah <laughs> the only way to have true success in the kingdom is to keep pointing people to Jesus as the one who really does have the goods in an endless and an abundant supply you know, there's no records in scripture and you can search this out for yourself there's no records in scripture of long drawn out prayers for healing as so though healing was dependent on the ability of, of those praying their ability to somehow break through and hit the magic button that released the healing you know, so much of churchianity has got engaged in kind of behaviour like that but it's just not there in the word of God all prayer was in the name of Jesus and, and it was in no way dependent upon the perfection of the person praying to the level of anointing that they had managed to attain to through intense spiritual discipline. No, no, that's just, it's not there. Rather than having a, a look at us, we've got it kind of mentality, we should be continually diligent to remove both our own and others' focus away from us and on to Jesus, hallelujah. Yes, we have a testimony of what God has done in our lives. But that's not to point people to us. That's to point them from us, through us, to Jesus, the one whom we are testifying about, whose power and majesty, whose love and mercy and grace we are testifying about. Hallelujah. See, rather than having a look at us, we've got it mentality. When Peter said to the lame man, look at us, he was inviting the man to give them his attention because there was something that he needed to hear. This man needed to hear that they had nothing material for him at all. Silver and gold, we have none. But such as we have, we give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. They needed to hear that in the name of Jesus he could be healed, totally healed, not just have a few pennies in his can to sustain him for another day, but that he could be totally, radically healed, that his whole life could be changed. Hallelujah. In the same way, we can invite people to give us their attention so that they can hear about Jesus and look to him and be saved healed and delivered. Our success will always be determined by looking away from ourselves and all other distractions and looking only to Jesus. See, there's only room for one celebrity <laughs> in the kingdom. You may not think that, but that's the reality. That's the truth. <laughs> we need to get back to that. We need to strip away all of the other stuff and get back to that. His name is Jesus. Come on, no more flapping. <laughs> that's a lot of flapping involved. And try to create celebrities. No more flapping. I was born to soar. Hallelujah. You see, I may never attain to, and you may never attain to the perfect faith required to receive everything that we need, but that's okay. That's okay, that's okay because we know a man who has perfect faith. I know a man who has perfect faith. His name is Jesus, and he is the perfecter of my faith. And he is a perfecter of your faith. So I'm looking to him to provide for every shortfall. He has forgiven all of my sins. He's forgiven all of the places where I have fallen short of God's glory. His amazing grace saved a wretch <laughs> like me. He's my saviour. He's my healer. He's my deliverer. He's my provider. So I'm just going to keep looking to him. I'm going to keep looking to him. No more flapping. I was born to soar. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm going to keep pointing others to him. Because that's the good news of the kingdom. That's the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
the good news of Jesus Christ. The good news of Jesus Christ. The good news is hear us. We've got nothing for you but a message. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Every believer from every church, from every movement, from every stream has been given a measure of faith and has access to every word that our Father God has spoken. Come on. Say no more flabbing. <laughs> I was born to soar. I was born to soar. See, that places all of us on a level playing field. And so our ability to receive all that our Father God has promised and provided is dependent only on our willingness to believe that he has already made it available. Jesus said all authority in heaven and earth has been given to him. And so that when he told us that he has given us authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, so that nothing shall by any means harm us or hurt us, he's inviting us to look to him and his place of ultimate authority and trust in his name, trust in his role as the author and finisher or perfecter and completer of our faith. See, I'm expecting, I'm looking for, I'm hoping in him, no more flapping I was born to. <laughs> so, hallelujah. You see, when Peter said look, the Greek word can be translated take heed or, or, or pay attention. And later on when Peter asked the people, why are you looking at us? The Greek word is, is a word that can be translated as gaze intently. See, his words, look at us, had, become, had almost become a doctrine. <laughs> but that wasn't the message at all. The message was in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So many people are looking to a person and then it all it gets stuck. Things stop working. Very often, you know, we can we can end up just running on reputation. But reputation never never helped anybody. <laughs> I, I've I've seen it myself. I, I've heard it in my own life and my own testimony. You, you, you know, you're you're pulling on stuff from five years ago. That's great. These things from five years ago, ten years ago. I've been listening to someone recently quite a lot, and, and almost everything significant that, that that he pulls on happened back in the eighties. I'm not having a go with the guy, definitely not, absolutely not, of course not, but it's just, it, 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 it convicted me. <laughs> no, is all the good stuff back in the past? Are we going to do an Elijah and become a has-been? No, it's time to renew our strength. How do we do that? We get our focus back on Jesus, because Jesus never changed. He never took a holiday. <laughs> He's never been on lockdown. <laughs> Come on. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus, 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 Jesus. People need to hear his name because there's power in his name. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's not through any power of ours, Peter said. It's not through any holiness of ours. No, his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Look to him and be saved. Look to him and be healed. Look to him and be delivered. He's the author and the finisher. He's the, come on. Oh, hallelujah. He's the completer, the perfecter. Oh, hallelujah. Kobo shakabasa. In Hebrews chapter 12, when it speaks about looking to Jesus, the Greek word, aphorao, means undivided attention. It's made up of two words, apo meaning away from, and harao meaning to see. So the, the word actually signifies undivided attention. Looking away from all distractions in order to fix one's gaze on one object. Looking away from everything else and looking to Jesus. See, that, that releases all the pressure. <laughs> See, I'm expecting. I'm looking for and hoping in him. No more flapping. <laughs> I was born 
to soar. Hallelujah. I'm not a sinner trying to get righteous. I'm not flapping. I'm the righteousness of God with power and authority in Jesus' name to resist sin by simply looking away from myself and all other distractions and looking, giving my undivided attention to Jesus who is my righteousness. Oh, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. See, I'm expecting, I'm looking for, hoping in him. No more flapping, born to soar. I don't go low, I go. <laughs> ah, amen. I'm not the sick. I am not the sick trying to get healed. I am the healed with power and authority in Jesus' name to resist sickness by simply, <laughs> by simply looking away from myself and all other distractions and looking, giving my undivided attention to Jesus who is my healer. Oh, hallelujah. See, I'm expecting. I'm looking for and hoping in him. No more flapping. I was born to soar. Hallelujah. I'm not depressed. I'm trying to get delivered. I'm the delivered. With power and authority in Jesus' name to resist oppression by simply looking away from myself and all other distractions and looking giving my undivided attention to Jesus, who is my deliverer. See, I'm expecting, I'm looking for, and hoping in him. No more flapping, I was born to soar. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm not the poor, trying to prosper. I am the prosperous with power and authority in Jesus Name to resist poverty by simply looking away from myself and all other distractions and looking and giving my undivided attention to Jesus who is my provider. Oh, hallelujah. Come on now. See, I'm expecting, I'm looking for, I'm hoping in him no more flapping i was born to soar you know people have asked me why i keep saying the same things over and over about righteousness and healing and deliverance and prosperity and i, I said to one or two people you know I said well you need to hear something you need to you need to hear what i'm saying here by the time you are sick and tired of hearing my voice you won't be sick and tired anymore <laughs> oh hallelujah so I'm going to keep pointing you to Jesus as your saviour as your healer as your deliverer as your provider and those who wait on the Lord who expect and look for and hope in him they shall mount up with wings like eagles they shall run and not grow weary they shall walk and not grow tired or faint hallelujah oh hallelujah blessed be the name of the Lord. See, I'm expecting, I'm looking for and hoping in him. No more flapping because I was born to soar. See, there's no room for spiritual pride or, or, or spiritual elitism because it's got nothing to do with our power or our godliness. It's all down to Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. See, I'm expecting. <laughs> I'm looking for and hoping in him so there's no more flapping because I was born to soar. You see, as you get the attention of those around you, point them to Jesus. Tell them they don't have to flap anymore as the devil comes to intimidate them. Tell them that they can expect, they can look for, and they can hope in Jesus. Tell them that they can soar. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just make this statement one more time right now as we bring this to a close. See, I'm expecting. <laughs> Come on, turn on your expectation right now. Maybe your expectation's been a bit, well, 
a bit low over the past while. Maybe maybe you're back down to that level where the devil can get you flapping again. Let, let's let's just let's just make this confession. Let's make this declaration right now. I am expecting. I am looking for, and I am hoping in Him. I'm hoping. I'm looking. I'm expecting Jesus. I'm looking for. Jesus, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping in Jesus. And so there'll be no more flapping. No more flapping. Because I was born to soar. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus that you didn't create us, you didn't design us to get stuck in a life of flapping. You created us, Lord, to occupy, <laughs> to be seated with you in the heavenly places far above principalities and powers and every intimidating devil that comes to try and steal and kill and to destroy to steal that life from us to kill that life in us to destroy our hope come on hallelujah thank you father come holy spirit come holy spirit come right now and 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 just lord we just we just take that thermal and we rise up right now Hallelujah, on that thermal, hallelujah. Shababa, sakababa, shakababa. Kombu, shababa, sikata, sakayanda. Our whole perspective begins to change. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Our expectation increases. Hallelujah. We expect to receive right now whatever it is we need from our Savior, from our healer, from our deliverer, from our provider whose name is Jesus, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the fullness of your provision. Thank you for the greatest demonstration of love that the world has ever seen or ever will see or ever could see. Thank you, Father. Let all come and only believe and receive all that you have done and all that you will do. In Jesus' name, amen.